Hello, pre-calculus students. Today we're going to learn about Demoivre's theorem, or as I like to call it sometimes, Dead French Guy's theorem. And Demoivre's theorem um, is an easy way to take complex numbers and raise them to powers or find their roots. How many of you have ever wondered what the square root of i is? Yeah, I have too. So Demoivre's theorem allows us to do that. I'm going to fly through this because I don't want these videos to be too long. If you think it's necessary to take notes on even the derivation and stuff like that, well, you can always pause the video. Otherwise, just watch, see where it comes from. And then um, when I start working some problems, maybe you want to write those down. So let's share my screen here <coughs> with the Elmo. And here is Demoivre's, um, starting with Demoivre's theorem. We're going to take the complex number z, which is r cis theta. <clears throat> and you can't see me as I point on my computer screen. Let's go over here. r cis theta. So if I want to find z squared, I do r times this times r times this. Well, all those um, numbers are multiplied together, so I could just uh, rewrite it as r times r times this times this, which I've done here. Foil these, and you get what's in blue here. <coughs> now, you might notice that if you take the real numbers, cosine theta, cosine theta, minus sine theta, sine theta, is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, which is actually the cosine of two theta. That's one of our double angle identities. And combine this and this, factor an i out. <coughs> Let's see. Oh, this and this, there we go. Anyway, we're gonna end up with sine of two theta times i. So you can see that if you take r cis theta and square it, you get r squared cis 2 times theta. <clears throat> that leads us to De Moivre's theorem, <clears throat> which says if you take any complex number in polar form, and that's extremely important, and raise it to the nth power, well, you raise r to the nth power but you multiply theta by n. <clears throat> now, if we wanted to find um, a plus bi to the fifth power, so this is not in um, polar form, well, the easiest way to do that would be to square it, square that answer, and then multiply, so that gives us to the fourth, and then multiply it again by a plus bi. That's a lot of foiling. <clears throat> <clears throat> take a number in polar form though it's r to the fifth cis five theta and then if you wanted to convert it back into a plus bi form well you distribute so it's r to the fifth cosine five theta plus r to the fifth sine five theta times i so r to the fifth cosine five theta becomes your a r to the fifth sine five theta becomes your b, and then you still have your i. <coughs> Another example. Maybe you want to write this one down. If I take three plus four i to the fourth power, I have to multiply all those terms together. If I FOIL these, I get this. You should FOIL that and make sure that you can get that correctly. <coughs> FOIL these, I get the same number. Then I FOIL these. <coughs> Combine like terms. Anyway, this is the final answer I get in black here. If I take 3 plus 4i to the fourth power, convert it to polar form. Well, that's a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, so I know that r is equal to 5. Arc tangent of four thirds is 53.1 degrees, raise it to the fourth power. That's five to the fourth, 
cis or times 53.1 degrees. So here's my answer in polar form. <clears throat> if I want to convert it to A plus BI form, 625 times the cosine of this gives me this. 625 times the sine gives me this I. You can see that there's a little bit of rounding error here. I didn't have to round R at R at all, but I certainly had to round theta. Instead of going to 53.1 degrees, if I had used 53.13 degrees, which would be just a little more precise, you can see that I do, in fact, um, to one decimal place at least, get the correct answer. So if I want to take the number a plus bi and raise it to a power, for instance, 3 plus 4i to the fourth, first I convert it to r cis theta, raise it to the fourth power using de Moivre's theorem, and then use the distributive property, 625 times the cosine of this to get this number, 625 times the sine of this to get this number, and then it is cis, there's my i. <coughs> Let's take i to the fourth power. We know that i to the fourth power is one. So we also know that i to the fourth power is zero plus i. Let me raise that to the fourth power. Well, zero plus one i, if I graph it there, it should be pretty obvious that that's one unit from the pole at an angle of 90 degrees. I is one cis 90 degrees. <laughs> Raise it to the fourth power is one to the fourth cis 90 times four, 360 degrees. 360 degrees is coterminal with zero. One cis zero degrees turns out to be one. But we already knew that because we know the pattern for i. It's i, i squared is negative one, i cubed is negative i, i to the fourth is one, i to the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, it just continues in that pattern. <coughs> now, I know my picture is going to be up there in the corner, but I don't know exactly where, so I'll bring it down here. Let's take negative 1 minus i, raise it to the fourth power. Negative 1 minus i, I should, you should be able to look and go negative 1, negative 1. That's going to be a 45 degree reference angle, 225 degrees in the third quadrant. And if it's 1 and 1, the hypotenuse has to be root 2. So negative one minus i is root two cis 225 degrees. Raise it to the fourth power. <laughs> root two to the fourth is four. Four times 225 is 900 degrees, which is coterminal with 180, which is negative four. Cosine 180 is negative one. Four times negative one is negative four. Sine 180 is zero, so there's the zero i. So this number raised to the fourth power is negative four. <clears throat> it's a real number. It's on the real axis. Remember, all positive numbers are on the, um, are zero degrees in polar form. All negative real numbers are 180 degrees in polar form. And four cis 180 degrees is negative four. A few more examples, then we'll get into some more good stuff. One plus root three times i, raise it to the fifth. Now one squared is one, root three squared is three, one plus three is four, squared is two. And you should know going over root three up one is the same as going over root three over two up one half, you know, circle wise, it's gonna be 60 degrees <laughs> to the fifth power. Two to the fifth is 32, 60 times five is 300 degrees. 
spoil this out. If you write this now, expand this as cosine 300 degrees plus I sine 300 degrees. 32 times the cosine of 300 degrees is 16. 32 times the sine of 300 degrees is negative 16 root 3. So it'd be negative 16 root 3 times I. We don't like to put the I out here because then it might be not be clear do you, does the I belong under the radical or not? So you have two choices. You can put the radical, the I in front of the radical, or you can put parentheses around this number, to show that the whole quantity is multiplied by I. <laughs> now the square root of negative four is two I. And you can see then that x squared plus four equals zero. That gives me two answers. This, only get, this problem only gives me one answer. When we're talking about a square root, we're always talking about the principal square root. So 2i is the only answer to this problem. However, since um, this problem here, where you get x equals well, x squared equals negative four. If x squared, they're going to be two answers. Similarly, if you take the square root of nine, you only get three. You don't get plus or minus three. x squared equals nine has two answers, and those are plus or minus three, but the square root of nine is only three. <coughs> now, here's an interesting uh, problem. <coughs> x cubed minus eight equals zero. Everybody should be able to tell me x equals two, yay. But it's an x cubed problem. Where are the other two answers? What are they? Somebody might say, two i. Well, two i doesn't work. How about negative two? Well, negative two cubed is negative eight. So we have a, a problem here, but we're gonna find those other two answers with Bloch's theorem. <coughs> x cubed minus eight equals zero. x cubed equals negative eight. I'm sorry, x cubed equals positive eight. Let's rewrite eight as eight plus zero i, so that's in rectangular form. And then let's write it in r cis theta form, eight cis zero degrees. Remember, eight is a positive number, a positive real number. It's gonna be on the positive real axis. It's, of course, it's gonna be zero degrees. Take the cube root of both sides. So x equals this. Now we have r is one third. I'm sorry, uh, n is one third. De Moivre's theorem still works with fractional exponents. Eight cis zero degrees to the one third power. Eight to the one third, zero degrees times one third. It's two cis, zero degrees is two. We already knew that, but <laughs> let's see. What if, instead of eight cis zero degrees, would you agree with me that that's the same as eight cis 360 degrees? You foil it out, you still get eight. But when you deploy De Moivre's theorem to it, you end up with two cis 120 degrees, which is right here. <clears throat> and I hope now you'd agree that adding another 360, we'd still get eight. So eight says 720 degrees raised to the one third. Eight uh, is gonna be two cis 240 degrees, which is down here. <clears throat> also note that since this polynomial has all real coefficients, our imaginary roots are complex conjugates. A plus bi and a minus bi. <clears throat> so the roots of a complex number then, you want to find all the roots of a complex number. Let n be the number of roots you're doing. r to the n. Now theta, you multiply theta times or one over n is theta over n. 
And now you just keep adding 360 degrees over N. In other words, if you have three roots, your first root was at zero degrees, the next one was at 360 over three, 120, the next one was at 240. If you have four roots, you're gonna keep adding 360 over four or 90 degrees to your principal root. So you're gonna go 90 plus, you know, you're gonna start with your principal root and then go plus nine, oh, let's see. Plus nine, no, for you guys it'd be this way. Plus 90, plus 90, plus 90. And then when the fourth one, you'd be back to your original root. If you have five roots, you're gonna add 360 divided by five or 72 degrees to each of your answers. <clears throat> if x to the fourth equals one, we know that these two are roots. What are the other two? Well, I write x to the fourth as one, rewrite it in a plus bi form, rewrite it in our cis theta form. And if I want to find four roots, I raise it to the one fourth power. <clears throat> so my first answer is one cis zero degrees. There are four roots. 360 divided by four is 90. So the other three roots are here, here, and here. Now you should be able to take all four of these, raise them to the fourth power, and confirm that the answer is one. <clears throat> How about this one? We know that one of the answers is one. So we can just start with one cis zero degrees, even if you don't want to go through all of this work. 360 divided by five is 72. So you just keep adding 72 to that. <clears throat> Notice that since x squared to the fifth minus one equals zero, all of the numbers in there are real, then all of our imaginary roots come in complex conjugate pairs. This one and this one, a plus bi, a minus bi. These two are complex conjugate pairs, a plus bi, a minus bi. <clears throat> which leads us to this, if you have a polynomial with all real numbers, imaginary roots will always, always, always occur in complex conjugate pairs. Now, I remember when I first learned about i, I thought, what is the square root of i? Well, if you ask it this way, there's one answer, because it's just, what is the principal root of i? Or you could write it this way, and now it's a polynomial that has two answers. <clears throat> so let's find what the square root of i is. x squared equals i, i is zero plus one i, which is one cis 90 degrees. It's right here. Take the square root of both sides, x equals this, which is one to the one half, the square root of one is one, 90 degrees times one half is 45 degrees. Foil it out and here's your answer. There are two answers to this problem. So I'm gonna take 360, divide it by two, get 180. My next answer is gonna be 180 degrees away. Foil it out, here's the answer. So those two numbers, so this is the principal the principal square root of i, both of these, when you square them, will give you i. I just got done talking about your roots will always, always, always be complex conjugates. Why are these two roots not complex conjugates? Well, the answer is because they come from there, and if we make a polynomial out of this, x squared minus i equals zero, and in the previous slide, I said that all the coefficients had to be real numbers. And here we have, um, or all the a values had to be real numbers. Here's one that isn't real. Well, if you're raising to a whole number power, there's only going to be one answer. 
two to the fifth power doesn't have five answers. It's just two times two times two times two times two, which is 32. If I wanted to take the fifth, find the five fifth roots of two or of uh, 32, well, then I would need five answers. Here, if I'm raising a number to the sixth power, I use the theorem, there are only six answers. I don't have to keep adding 60 degrees to that because that would not be correct. Here's the formula. x to the fifth equals negative 32. We should note right away that negative two is one of the answers. You should be able to look at that problem and tell that negative two is an answer. That tells me already that two cis 180 degrees is an answer. I know there are five answers. So I'm gonna be, um, my answers are gonna be 72 degrees apart. In theory, this is the principal square root because that's what you get applying Demois theorem, but I like negative two here. So anyway, you could either go through Demois theorem and get this and keep adding 72, or if you know that negative two is an answer, like we do, you can keep subtracting 72, adding 72, and there are your five fifth roots of negative 32. So, that is um, just one reason why we might want to put um, complex numbers in polar form. There are also some applications in um, theoretical physics. There are some in um, electrical engineering, but that's why we do it. So just wanted to show you that so that you could understand a little bit more of why we need to write complex numbers in polar form. Hope you have a great day.